Hi and welcome to another Type with me. In this video I'm gonna talk about tsconfig.json. We're gonna see what the difference is between module and target and I'm also gonna talk about model resolution and lip. Let's get started. So I have here a basic uh, TypeScript um, project. I have an add.ts, I have an index.ts, and I have a subtract or, or a subtract.ts, right? And in this index, I have some class with some function and some return, which has also an object. Then, of course, yeah, maybe I need to put something here. And of course, we need to have uh, tsconfig.json. So now we have a tsconfig.json. I'm just going to remove this one and replace it with this one, right? We have here a target a module. Yes, module interrupt, which is true. Force consistent casing in files, true. And then output directory is loop. So our target is ECMAScript 5, right? And of course, our target can also be ECMAScript 3. So maybe we need to start with the lowest one. So we're going to do that. And then I'm going to do something like npx tsc to see what he's going to output. Now we have a file which has add.es, right? We have a file with index.js which has some class here, you see, he uses the prototype, which is that what's been used within ECMAScript 3. And then we have our subtract. So let's go to ECMAScript 5. Let's see what he is going to do with that. So now you see that our module functions are a little bit different, right? So now he could already use object.define property and before he couldn't do that. Uh, the same here, right? And then here we have our some class, which is the class with the prototype on it. Great. Now we can go for 2015, right? And when we do that, you will see that we have some problems with lib yes 2015 uh, duplicate. Uh, so what we do now is we are going to create a npm package of it and we're going to install types slash node slash d and then you'll see that it's gonna disappear share this error oh um all right when we compile it again ta-da We'll see that it just works. And you will notice that we have here our arrow functions, right? And here we have our class, which is, has a constructor. And in that constructor, he is going to use this uh, dollar object. Great. So now you can go to tsconfig.json, right? And there you can change the target from ES2015 to ES2016, right? And then when you do 
npx tsc you will see there maybe something changed maybe not one thing that you really need to know is do you need to need to use this ECMAScript version? What are the changes that are in this ECMAScript version? And so on. And if you really want to test these things out, just create a small TypeScript application and uh, test it out there. Uh, definitely with these tsconfig.json properties, just test it out a very small TypeScript project to learn a little bit more about what it does right so you see that not all of things have changed so when i go to for example ecmascript 2018 you can go and execute it but then again we get some errors here because Node.js is not supporting ECMAScript 2018 here, so um, that's pity. Then again, I think it's just just warning. So um, when you go here. See that. We have no problems with that. So now we're going to take a look at module system swag. So we had all our targets. Our targets are just the ECMAScript versions that we want to use. Uh, and that our target node or the browser supports. So that's what you need to put there. And then you have the module system. And that's just uh, a system how to handle and how to load different TypeScript or, or JavaScript files that are being generated. Uh, within the system. So uh, here we are just using the common JS uh, module system, right? So when I compile it again, you will see, for example, here that we just have here object.define property with ES module. Um, and then when I go to, yeah, of course, I just need to save it. Just gonna do it again. It doesn't matter. Right. So another one could be AMD or UMD. So I'm going to put here EMD, for example. And then when we compile this, you will see that he just changed it. And we have here EMD, which are using required and so on. So it's important to know which kind of um, module system that uh, you're going to use within your uh, within your system, within Node or within the browser. So remember that Node uses the common JS, so that's that's an important one. Uh, but not everyone knows what this does, so I'm, I'm just showing you a little bit here what it does, what you can do with it. And again, I recommend you to really play with this yourself and to see what it does, uh, to see what it generates. It's always nice to see what it generates. So here it generates the code for UMD, right? And UMD is a little bit of an EMD system. So one of the other things could be system, which is a system JS system. So if you are using system JS there and you're targeting that module system, you can just put there system, right? And then it's going to use system.register. So when you're going to take a look at system JS, for example, you see that it's a dynamic ES module loader, right? And then uh, you get some kind of explanation here, how you can use this. 
it's just something that you need to be aware of. You need to choose some kind of module system and then go with that. But again, uh, with Node, with Dino, and with Browser, these model systems are going to be baked in, right? So uh, before, um, we need to have additional uh, JavaScript libraries to do so, but within um, within the future and also a little bit now, you can already start using um, the native model systems, right? The ECMAScript model systems. So again, experiment a little bit with it and see what fits you the best. So you could also use the um, ES 2015 module system, right? The native module system of ECMAScript. Then you just do this. Then when you render it out, or compile it out, sorry, then you'll see here export, right? And of course, here in index, you find import and import and then export and export. So it's just working like that. And then you can just use that within the browser. But remember, for example, that node doesn't have this kind of um, features in it or not completely. So again, you need to choose there some kind of model system. Um, well, there is an experimental flag that you already can use, um, or there are other ways to use it within Node, but remember or take account that it's still a little bit of a challenge. Um, all right, so, so, so that's it. Um, then we have also the module uh, resolution. So um, the model resolution is um, standard on, uh, on Node but you can also put it on classic right so that's also something that you could do this configures how the compiler tries to find your modules resolve them there are two strategies for doing so the classic or the node and i set this to node because i'm using used to how node resolves modules node node is now typescript's default mode of module resolution and classic is mostly present for backwards compatibility also related to the output of your code is lib and lib tells the compiler which language features are available when the compiled code is running in most cases it would be the same as target except if you polyfilled the runtime environment, for example, you may have polyfilled the promise class in an ECMAScript 5 environment, right? And then you can just say um, ES5 as a target and then lip with uh, promise in yeah, ES2015 promise. And then you can just pick certain features of the language uh, where you have your polyfill filled in for. So that's where lip stands and comes in. So if you see, this is how you can use that, right? And then when you go to, for example, this one, and uh, .ts, you have your promise.resolve and then uh, great. So in your TS config, you have lip with yes 2015 promise and your target is yes five um, when we then do something like this mpx tsc to compile it and then go to um, add you will see that we have promise dot resolve great so he doesn't going to uh, change that promise dot resolve he's just going to use it like it is um, so when you remove this And then you compile it again. You will see that he has some problems with promise. It refers to a type, but it's being used as a value here. Do you need to change the target library, right? So that's the reason why we are just using that. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like it. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to learn a little bit more about these kind of things. Um, Goodbye, see you next time.